Act Four. I say, Pick, lock up, will you? I shan't be going out again. Right. Can Mrs. Pierce go to bed? We don't want anything more, do we? Lord, no. I say, Mrs. Pierce will row if we leave these things lying about in the drawing room. Oh, chuck them over the banister into the hall. She'll find them there in the morning and put them away all right. She'll think we were drunk. We are slightly. Are there any letters? I didn't look. I wonder where the devil my slippers are. Only circulars and this coroneted billet do for you. Money lender. Oh, Lord, what an evening. What a crew. What a silly tomfoolery. Oh, they're there, are they? Well, I feel a bit tired. It's been a long day. The garden party, a dinner party and the opera. Rather too much of a good thing. But you've won your bet, Higgins. Eliza did the trick and something to spare, eh? Thank God it's over. Were you nervous at the garden party? I was. Eliza didn't seem a bit nervous. Oh, she wasn't nervous. I knew she'd be all right. No, it's the strain of putting the job through all these months that has told on me. It was interesting enough at first, while we were on the phonetics, but after that I got deadly sick of it. If I hadn't backed myself to do it, I should have chucked the whole thing up two months ago. It was a silly notion. The whole thing has been a bore. Oh, come, the garden party was frightfully exciting. My heart began beating like anything. Yes, for the first three minutes... But when I saw we were going to win hands down, I felt like a bear in a cage, hanging about doing nothing. The dinner was worse, sitting gorging there for over an hour with nobody but a damned fool of a fashionable woman to talk to. I tell you, Pickering, never again for me. No more artificial duchesses. The whole thing has been simple purgatory. You've never been broken in properly to the social routine. I rather enjoy dipping into it occasionally myself. It makes me feel young again. Anyhow, it was a great success, an immense success. I was quite frightened once or twice because Eliza was doing it so well. You see, lots of the real people can't do it at all. They're such fools that they think style comes by nature to people in their position, and so they never learn. There's always something professional about doing a thing superlatively well. Yes, that's what drives me mad. The silly people don't know their own silly business. However, it's over and done with, and now I can go to bed at last without dreading tomorrow. I think I shall turn in too. Still, it's been a great occasion, a triumph for you. Good night. Good night. Put out the lights, Eliza, and tell Mrs Pierce not to make coffee for me in the morning. I'll take tea. What the devil have I done with my slippers? There are your slippers, and there. Take your slippers, and may you never have a day's luck with them. What on earth? What's the matter? Get up. Anything wrong? Nothing wrong with you. I've won your bet for you, haven't I? That's enough for you. I don't matter, I suppose. You won my bet. You, presumptuous insect. I won it. What did you throw those slippers at me for? because I wanted to smash your face. I'd like to kill you, you selfish brute. Why didn't you leave me where you picked me out of in the gutter? You thank God it's all over, and that now you can throw me back again there, do you? The creature is nervous after all. Ah, would you? Claws in, you cat. How dare you show your temper to me? Sit down and be quiet. What's to become of me? What's to become of me? How the devil do I know what's to become of you? What does it matter what becomes of you? You don't care. I know you don't care. You wouldn't care if I was dead. I'm nothing to you. Not so much as them slippers. Those slippers. Those slippers. I didn't think it made any difference now. Why have you begun going on like this? May I ask whether you complain of your treatment here? No. Has anyone behaved badly to you? Colonel Pickering? Mrs Pierce? Any of the servants? No. I presume you don't pretend that you that I have treated you badly? No. I'm glad to hear it. Th- no. Thank you. 
This has been coming on you for some days. I suppose it was natural for you to be anxious about the garden party, but that's all over now. There's nothing more to worry about. No, nothing more for you to worry about. Oh, God, I wish I was dead. Why? In heaven's name, why? Listen to me, Eliza. All this irritation is purely subjective. I don't understand. I'm too ignorant. It's only imagination. Low spirit and nothing else. Nobody's hurting you. Nothing's wrong. You go to bed like a good girl and sleep it off. Have a little cry and say your prayers. That will make you comfortable. I heard your prayers. Thank God it's all over. Well, don't you thank God it's all over? Now you are free and can do what you like. What am I fit for? What have you left me fit for? Where am I to go? What am I to do? What's to become of me? Oh, that's what's worrying you, is it? I shouldn't bother about it if I were you. I should imagine you won't have much difficulty in settling yourself somewhere or other, though I hadn't quite realised that you were going away. You might marry, you know. You see, Eliza, all men are not confirmed old bachelors like me and the Colonel. Most men are the marrying sort, poor devils, and you're not bad-looking. It's quite a pleasure to look at you sometimes. Not now, of course, because you're crying and looking as ugly as the very devil, but when you're all right and quite yourself, you're what I should call attractive. That is, to the people in the marrying line, you understand. You go to bed and have a good, nice rest, and then get up and look at yourself in the glass, and you won't feel so cheap. I dare say my mother could find some chap or other who would do very well. We were above that at the corner of Tottenham Court Road. What do you mean? I sold flowers. I didn't sell myself. Now you've made a lady of me, I'm not fit to sell anything else. I wish you'd left me where you found me. Tosh, Eliza! Don't you insult human relations by dragging all this can't about buying and selling into it? You needn't marry the fellow if you don't like him. What else am I to do? Oh, lots of things. What about your old idea of a florist's shop? Pickering could set you up in one. He's lots of money. <laughs> He'll have to pay for all those togs you've been wearing today. And that, with the hire of the jewellery, will make a big hole in £200. Why, six months ago you would have thought it the millennium to have a flower shop of your own. Come, you'll be all right. I must clear off to bed. I'm devilishly sleepy. By the way, I came down for something. I forgot what it was. Your slippers. Oh, yes, of course. You shined them at me. Before you go, sir. Huh? Do my clothes belong to me or to Colonel Pickering? What the devil use would they be to Pickering? He might want them for the next girl you pick up to experiment on. Is that the way you feel towards us? I don't want to hear anything more about that. All I want to know is whether anything belongs to me. My own clothes were burnt. But what does it matter? Why need you start bothering about that in the middle of the night? I want to know what I may take away with me. I don't want to be accused of stealing. You shouldn't have said that, Eliza. That shows a want of feeling. I'm sorry. I'm only a common ignorant girl, and in my situation I have to be careful. There can't be any feelings between the like of you and the like of me. Please will you tell me what belongs to me and what doesn't. You may take the whole confounded houseful if you like, except the jewellery, they're hired. Will that satisfy you? Stop. Please. Will you take these to your room and keep them safe? I don't want to run the risk of their being missing. Hand them over. If these belong to me instead of to the jeweller, I'd ram them down your ungrateful throat. This ring isn't the jeweller's, sir. It's the one you bought me in Brighton. I don't want it now. Don't you hit me. Hit you? You infamous creature, how dare you accuse me of such a thing? It is you who have hit me. You have wounded me to the heart. I'm glad. I've got a little of my own back anyhow. You have caused me to lose my temper, a thing that has hardly ever happened to me before. I prefer to say nothing more tonight. I'm going to bed. 
You'd better leave a note for Mrs. Pierce about the coffee, for she won't be told by me. Confound Mrs. Pierce and the blasted coffee! And confound you and shame on my own folly in having lavished my hard-earned knowledge and the treasure of my regard and intimacy on a heartless gutter snipe. Is that it? Yeah! Ooh. Act four! <laughs> I'm going to leave that last bit in.